Transocean is a business simulation released in 2014 by Deck 13. The game is about setting up and managing a shipping company that will take cargoes from a port and deliver it to another port in timely fashion. When you start the game you'll be offered two different choices after choosing your initial difficulty level. You either can set up onto a free game or follow a campaign. Personally I recommend following the campaign because both are actually the same thing, it's just the campaign does set you goals to achieve and follow and also grants you a couple of special side quest missions that will definitely add some variety to the game. Then we have to select the port to build or headquarter at and uh, depending on the port type they will grant different benefit to you throughout the game. That we'll discuss more later on. When launching a new campaign we got a nice little cinematic setting up the scope of the game. As you are too poor to start your own multinational company, you do receive some financing from a random investor. And you best remember that random investor because that person will be on your tail the entire game. Then we acquire first ship, a very small ship of the feeder class, but that will be sufficient to start. We go to the contract list and acquire a few contracts to deliver to a specific location, and we launch the ship. This is pretty much entirety of the gameplay except for one important details. Especially early on since we are quite poor we do sometimes have to dock our ships manually rather than using the tug boats to do it automatically which uh, adds a kind of small mini game that is present in the game. During this minigame you take the helm of the ship and you have to station it into a specific area in the dock to be able to well dock it. And when you start off with a smaller ship you have very limited control into the ship but as you expand and you acquire larger ships you actually gain more control with rudders uh, I think that's the proper term allowing you to move the front or the rear of the ship individually and completely independently from the rest of the ship which actually makes it much easier to move huge ships rather than smaller vessels. This was actually quite a learning experience for me because before playing this game I honestly had no idea how big ships were able to maneuver in such tight space as a dock. But generally the goal of the docking sequence is to deliver the ship in the right location without taking damage because if you take too much damage you'll be forced to call the tug boats to moor your ships in the right place. But the scenery actually looks very beautiful in this mode and you can actually have beautiful attractions that are localized depending on the port you're landing. For example, here in New York, you have the Statue of Liberty standing right at the entrance of the dock. In addition to not damaging the ship, you also have a docking time with a high score less and while it changes nothing, you can try to achieve the best time possible to dock your ship. Outside of that, the actual whole mini game is pretty much worthless because once you start making money and you have a lot of ship you can't really take a minute or two to manually dock every ship because that will take forever. And then we're back to the main world where pretty much all of the action happens. The whole premise of the game is to move cargoes from a location to another and when you enter a location you'll be able to see contract lists with different destinations, different price paid per deliveries and you must make a selection between the most favorable delivery price compared to distance and time it takes to actually make the delivery. As you gain larger ship there's not much difference in what you actually can transport. The only difference will come from the upgrades that you can put on your ship like refrigeration or suspension for fragile cargoes that will allow you to move different type of cargoes legally because you can actually move them without having any of the prerequisite needed to do such transportation. There's also a variety of illegal cargoes that you can usually find in the less than recommendable places that pay a lot of money. But if you get caught transporting illegal artifacts or illegal drugs, you can get a pretty substantial fine. Fines are actually just random events that you can receive and there are three different during your travels. You can either come across a storm that allows you to either wait it out or go around or sail through the storm which can damage your ship but will actually make it much faster to do. And you also have fires that can happen or pirates that can capture your ship and demand ransom. And you also have as previously mentioned police checkpoints or border checkpoints that will actually take the cargo of your ships to see if anything is illegal. In all of the case you have a different choice to make. You can either sacrifice a ship or pay the price that is required to do 
whatever is required or but ultimately the big problem that these random event give you is that they just had more delay to your shipping and since you're working onto contracts, if you have too much delay, you actually start paying fines for the time over the maximum limit delivery date that was guaranteed, which can become quite cumbersome if a ship sails around with stolen goods that get caught by the border officers and caught into a reef and caught into a storm and captured by pirates. It can be a quite expensive endeavor to actually send out a ship. And also not too often the initial investor that finance your entire endeavor will often come back every three months or so to take a little cut of the paycheck but the person only invested eight millions but at the end of the game is asking for a ludicrous amount every quarter and even more ludicrous amount when you're getting near the end of camping where you want to buy back our shares but this is all part of the storyline which started with the investor gives you giving you enough to buy your first ship and then you start making some transaction and then you start get, making more money buying more ship and expanding and eventually through the side missions you get an expansion as initially you only can access different European ports but then quickly you gain access to the entire planet and this is kind of where the game falls apart for me because the entirety of the game will be just that you looking at the map going into ports with your ships selecting contracts refueling your ships sending them out to the other port doing the same then and as you get more and more ships it becomes just annoying so you decide to sell off your smaller ships as they don't provide as much profit as your larger ships and then it hits you with a mission that asks you to deliver things to a very tiny port that you need the smallest ship available to be able to carry the goods into that location. Another thing that tickles me a bit with this game is that the contract forces you to get the goods from a specific port and deliver it to another specific port. You cannot decide to take goods from example plastic goods from Asia and move them into Africa and then sell them there. If you buy plastic goods this time with a destination of New York then you have to actually deliver them to New York. which. I mean it's not that bad, it's a certain system. Where it stings me a little bit more is actually that moving these goods sometimes require a pit stop. But a pit stop that you make in any ports on the way, you have to manually go onto the, the port and refill up the ship and then cast it off into the next destination, hopefully is the right one and you have enough fuel for that. And this caused tremendous delay and tremendous micromanaging of all your ships doing this all the time basically i think a good thing that will have been built into the game will be a automatic routing system that allows you to go for example five or six different city and the game decide the best contract between these city to carry around also refueling the ships that would have make it much easier because right now it became like a 15 hour crying of always doing the same thing and always doing the same clicks without much variety at all and due to that it the game becomes really bland and boring at the point and i thinking about it after playing I, I found out that the point is actually when you expand from Europe to the world there's just nothing that really makes it interesting after that point every side mission will be to deliver goods into a specific port from specific location where they're available from and that is pretty much the entire game which is not really interesting to play as a management game as it's more like a micromanagement game here that you just have to click always the same button all the time and the side mission I spoke about earlier they allow you to move forward into the storyline to the point where you can reacquire the company from the initial investor but these even these missions they're not that fun to play it's nothing special uh, the only exceptional mission I remember is one where you have to upgrade fully a ship and send it to Georgia ports for an exposition. But outside of that, usually it's bring that many lumber, that many ore, that many grain to uh, Hamburg, to Jeba, Jebel Ali, to Sydney, to Rajvac. And really the only difficulty that becomes is that you have a very constrained amount of time to deliver these goods. And uh, if you don't consecrate your entire fleet to doing that, you will most often fail 
uh, the delivery of the goods for the specific side missions and uh, it just breaks you out of the monotony of doing bland contracts but it's just the same thing over again and it doesn't stop and there is also special contracts that you can choose that ask you for example to deliver hundred millions of specific grain from a specific location to another specific location which make the game even worse in its lowest point because you will only see the two same port for a couple months as you're just trying to complete that specific requirement. And while the game looks good, the music is actually quite unnerving after a certain point. It seems like it's the same two minute loop that only variety comes from when you go into a port and the localized version of the same song almost plays there. And this in a nutshell is pretty much the entirety of the game Transocean the Shipping Company. It is a pretty empty game when you get to the end of it. It's not really interesting after a maybe a quarter of the way through the game, but it still was somewhat enjoyable for the first few minutes when you actually discover all the new options that are available to you. Since the release there has actually been a second title, Transocean 2 Rivals, which apparently solved most of my critical issue with this one game, but I haven't put my pals in it yet, so I don't know if it's really that much better. As for Transocean The Shipping Company, the first title, I don't think it's actually worth your time to play it, unless you really like managing shipping companies on a very vapid map. But hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review of Transocean The Shipping Company, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching, 